I was paying my credit card bill today. Nice. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and also seeing my dwindling bank account, you know. And, um, well, the account is still there. It's just the money, right? Yeah, yeah, the dwindling uh, dollars. Nice. Yeah. How does that feel? Um, well, it's interesting. That's why I wanted to share this with you is that um, usually if there's a lot of fear up, you know, you know, the fear is pretty strong and powerful. Where what it was, it was just giving me this, it was like a deadening feeling. Uh, and uh, because, you know, it was, um, it was really observable. Like I was feeling it, but it wasn't, it wasn't me. Like in the meditation, like, you know, everything's fine. Um, but it's just the mind that comes back and forth. And, uh, and, it, and it, quite, it activated it quite a bit, you mm -hmm. know, um, because, because there are less dollars th than I'm used to having. And, um, you know, I'm just having small jobs here and there to, to get something in. And plus, I wanted to go to Hawaii. So, um, mm -hmm. so it's really interesting. It really shifted uh, with fear and yeah. thoughts and whatever. Um, I don't know. I, I just wanted to share that. Any, mm -hmm. Anything you might want to say. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, one, one more thing. Is it... Um, the thoughts are kind of kind of uh, barking back at um, any teachings that the universe will provide for me or whatever that which I've been um, I feel living from for uh, greater than I've ever have. Uh, but the thoughts are going like the universe isn't going to bail your fucking credit card out or this or that. You know, so those kind of strong uh, thoughts are getting stronger and stronger. Um, it can do a lot of things, but it cannot fill up my bank account. <laughs> it upholds everything that it is. <laughs> it's so intelligent that it makes my cells vibrate at a certain rate where I can have this physical experience and where billions of molecules are dancing in my body and every other body. But it cannot fill up my bank account. <laughs> There's a lot of people laughing here. <laughs> it's a relatable subject. Anyone here who doesn't have a bank account? <laughs> oh, really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so can you you realize you've always been taken care of yeah yes when i stop and realize that it's really powerful mm -hmm. uh, how, how old are you if you don't mind me asking 58 58 yeah well, looking good brother. <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> what's the secret <laughs> what are the chances that in 58 years now is the time that you're not going to be supported no wow yeah what are the odds how often have you experienced a dwindling bank number I never really paid attention to it. I mean, I've had the fear. And, yeah. What are the odds? How many days is that? 58 years. Any math geniuses yeah. here? I think I got it without doing the math. Okay. <laughs> so, you don't have to be afraid because you'll be supported. It always works. I have to pay around 5,000 taxes, 15th of April, I think it is, oh. right? And we're moving to Colorado, which is around, you know, everything included will be roughly around 5,000 too, like the move and the stuff and the payments. So that's about 10,000 and we got maybe 25 or something, but there is no fear whatsoever. And that's such a good feeling. Yeah. It's like, I look at these numbers and there's just, there's not even like, Oh, what if no, no, what if there's just, they're just numbers. There's just numbers. And I'm going to be in Colorado in a few weeks yeah. and it's just certain, well, I may end up somewhere else. I don't know. It can always take you a different route, mm -hmm. but there's no fear that it continues. Mm -hmm. And it will. Mm -hmm. This is not the first time that these numbers, these kinds of numbers have come up. Mm -hmm. And for many of you as well. It's, something always comes through. So why worry about it? Yeah. Why make it such a project? Yeah. Unless, of course, you want to have that experience so that you can discover more of who you are, more of what your beliefs are, what your preferences are, what your desires are, what your resonance is. Because it offers a very valid template for you to experience yourself in, mm -hmm. in a particular way. Yeah, sure it, is. it allows certain kinds of fears, really existential fears, mm -hmm. to come to the surface. Mm -hmm. So it's a very valid way of giving yourself an experience that then triggers all these things that otherwise you may not be able to see. Mm. And it gives the opportunity to have greater trust in abundance, in the abundance of the universe, of intelligence, mm. of presence, of yourself, of your spirit. Right. So one way to really feel into that is to look at your past and see if you can find any experience where in retrospect, really, you may not have always liked them, but where you were not supported. Yeah. And you can't find any, unless you're holding on to some victim story of, yes, but I really didn't want that. And I was really abused in that situation. Mm -hmm. Then you may be able to say like, no, I wasn't supported there. Mm -hmm. But in retrospect, after you heal that part of yourself, mm -hmm. you'll see that even that was of surface to you. There's never been an experience in your life that was not of surface to you. Mm -hmm. Now you may not like every experience that comes your way or that you're attracting through your belief systems or that you're attracting to yourself in order to learn something about yourself. Mm -hmm. But in retrospect, you can always see how experiences have benefited you, have enriched your self-awareness. Mm -hmm. So can you find any experience where you were not being served, where you were not being supported? Yeah, no. So what are the odds that the day is that day? <laughs> right. Can you find any day in anybody else's life where they were not supported? What are the odds that out of all the 58 years on this planet, mm -hmm. yours, the day is going to fail? Yeah. <laughs> this is logic in a sense. It's yeah, just, yeah. it's mathematics. It's not even faith anymore. 
it's interesting, you know, over the last um, year or so, a lot of this doesn't come up that much. And, um, but now as the, the numbers are going down, it's kind of pushing up whatever fears are there. Like you were saying, kind of more like the ex existential ones than um, ones that are in the day-to-day -day life. Um, but I notice it doesn't really arise that much during the day. It's not a big part of my, my experience, but it, it happens like in the middle of the night. Like if I get up to pee or something, it's like 2 o'clock in the morning, I come back, it's there. Mm -hmm. Or like, like today, paying the credit card bill, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so it's not as believable as it was before, but um, I can still feel it pulling, you know. Sure. That's why I wanted to sure, yeah. share with you and hear what you have to say. So what are you, how are you approaching it? What are you doing with it? Um, I'm not really doing anything with it. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's trying to hold me back. Like I, I feel that. So there's something outside of yourself that has control over you? Is that what you're saying? It, it's pulling me back. Or are you going there? Well, I, I don't feel like there's a, like a, um, like I'm not aware of, of myself doing that. I feel like when I'm aware of it, it's, it's happening. Do uh -huh. you know what I mean? Like so I but then you're doing it, right? Huh? But then you're doing it, right? What do you mean by doing it? The moment you're aware of it? Yeah. You can see that you're going in that direction, even if it's light? Yeah. Yeah, I can feel that. And then a lot of times I'll just drop it, you know, and it seems to just not be there. <laughs> and then there are some times when it's kind of feeling like this pull. Mm -hmm. you know? The pull? Can you see that's really, it's a push? You're driving yourself there? Mm -hmm. How are you driving yourself there? Because there's nothing in control outside of consciousness. Mm -hmm. There's no force that has any gravitational pull whatsoever. Mm -hmm. We go somewhere. We go somewhere. We go somewhere. We go somewhere. So why are you going there? Not mm -hmm. why is it having a pull on me? Because that's not the case. Why are we going there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you discover why? Um, more because it's familiar. Um, okay. Familiar with old ways of uh, believing in everything I've been... And why, why would you choose to familiar? Even to call something familiar is to give it a credit that it doesn't have. It's to say, this is familiar, which means it's comfortable. But it doesn't necessarily mean that what's familiar has a gravitational pull of comfort. Mm. So what is the belief? No, no it's have? actually suffering. Uh -huh. You know? It is, yeah, yeah. You see it that way. Why are you going there? What's mm. the belief? Mm. What's the interest? What do you believe? But, but I, think the the benefit, I think the belief underneath that is, uh, is that I'm not going to have any, any money and I won't have uh, the comforts of life. You know? why, why does that interest you? <laughs> I know it doesn't sound like one would want to be too interested in that, but... <laughs> uh, <laughs> We're wising up. That's great. <laughs> I don't know, like when I got off on Patton Ave and there was somebody out there um, asking for money, you know, they had a little sign. And, um, and, I, and I just, you know, here is my money's dwindling, but I just gave him some. And, and it was, there was like a split second where I felt like... Asking it back? Huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> No, no, there was, there was a split second, a second that I was just exchanging something that I didn't have, you know what I mean, or kind of giving something that, mm -hmm. yeah, it was, it was, it was quite nice. Excellent, yeah. Um, so the belief is that I'm going to be poor, I'm going to be older, and I want to have a job. And but not really, this. otherwise you wouldn't be giving money to somebody, right? Mm -hmm. Not really, you don't really like, completely don't really believe, believe that. that right, yeah, there's a, definitely a hole poked in it for sure. Mm -hmm. In fact, I saw the fear, and, and, um, and then I got this thought or feeling or intuition that uh, in some ways... Uh, I'm saying fuck it to it all and going to Hawaii anyways, which is, it's in other words going, um, what's that saying? All for broke or something like that? It actually means it literally as well as, uh, mm -hmm. as uh, so it's almost like I'm trying to, it's almost in some way that I'm facing that and saying fuck you, you know? Mm, great. You know, the universe yeah. is going to provide for me, you know? It, it has that feeling. It's your no-nonsense policy. Ah, right, right. It's like this field around you that just it doesn't allow any nonsense in. Again, it's mm -hmm. like giving away anything you don't resonate with. But the giving away actually is an act of love. It's not a giving away as in a running away where we give something power that it doesn't have, which is called rejection or exclusion. This is inclusion. Mm -hmm. We include the things that come up for us, but we very clearly know that we have the power to say no, that we are the only power yeah. in the universe. So something only has an effect on us if we give it an effect on if us. If we give it the power, we get feed into it. Exactly. Sure. So yeah. the no-nonsense policy is that we don't allow any definitions or beliefs or meanings to creep on in that we don't prefer. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean we don't accept life as it is mm -hmm. or that we're not embracing things as they come along. We're looking at them, we're embracing them, integrating them, and then saying, ah, not that one. I'll take this one. I'm going to Hawaii, mm. no matter what. Mm. Bye-bye. Yeah. Putting that smile on your face, genuinely. Mm.